I am a leaf on the wind. Yeah. Potential energy is the energy stored in a system that can be turned into motion. In the case of this air rifle, we compress the air within the rifle by doing some work on it and store energy within the system by placing the gas under pressure. Why though do I call this energy stored in the system potential energy? What is potentially about it? To me, it looks as though the rifle is perfectly happy sitting there minding its own business. It does not need to be constantly reminded that it should be out there achieving greatness. Kinetic energy to me makes sense. How fast is something going? Okay, then it must have this amount of energy associated with it. Potential energy sounds so uncertain. Is it there or isn't it? Referring to something's potential energy just highlights the idea that if we were to poke the system in such a way we could get it to start to move of its own accord, of the energy stored in some way within the system. So is it a real thing? No. Well, y yes, it, it could be. Really, it's just a helpful convention that a physicist or scientist uses to help work out how much kinetic energy a system could produce if we were to let it. In the case of the air rifle, all we do by pulling that trigger is open a valve and then let the system do its thing. That internal pressure within the system is no longer counteracted by anything around it, so happily rushes out along the barrel, taking the pellet with it. So in the last case, potential energy was stored as a pressure difference, which maybe isn't the most conceptually easy thing to understand or place some context around. So let's deal with something which is a little bit more intuitive. The idea that there is a potential energy associated with gravity. Here, the lock holds back water at a higher level than it would otherwise choose to be at. This is similar to the compressed air being held back by the valve in the air rifle. So we can ascribe some amount of potential energy to this system. The water at the top of the lock has the potential, if given the chance, to fall over this distance. And as it falls, the force of gravity will accelerate it, making it go faster and faster, generating more and more kinetic energy. And obviously, the higher up that the water starts, the more potential to generate kinetic energy that it has. But is this potential for energy stored in any way in this water molecule sitting at the top of this lock, minding its own business? Does it differ in any way from a water molecule sitting happily next to us? No, not really, but the potential for motion is still there. Do you see the point I'm trying to make? Prior to generating this kinetic energy, the water molecule is utterly indifferent as to the great task ahead of it. The energy is not stored within it waiting to be unleashed, it is not directly associated with it, but is directly associated with the system in which it inhabits. That is the difference. Potential energy is associated with the system as a whole, rather than with the individual. The water molecule itself does not realise it has this potential until it starts on that downward journey. Much like Mr. Skywalker the Younger, you don't realise that you have that potential until you start trying to realise it. Which I think is a nice note to end on. This episode was actually inspired by a question which Archie H actually asked, which was, say we go to escape Earth's gravity and we move further and further away from the Earth, where is that potential energy actually stored within us? And why, in fact, do we not get pulled back to Earth once our kinetic energy we start with gets fully converted into potential energy? Now, this in its own right is actually a really good question. Say we jump really fast, roughly towards the second star to the right, fast enough that we make our way into space. As we leave the ground, we have our maximum kinetic energy, and from this point on, gravity is just chipping away at it. Effectively, yes, converting it into potential energy, but we see this just as us slowing down. So it isn't as if the energy is being stored in a battery pack in our backpack. Jack. Archie. There's no way of actually getting this energy back out unless we reverse directions and choose to fall back towards Earth. So this again deals with where is the energy actually stored. It's not really stored anywhere. It's a 
sort of property of the system as a whole. But moving on to the second part of the question, if we start off with this finite amount of kinetic energy, how do we ever escape the Earth's gravitational pull? Now this is a slightly easier question to answer and it comes just as a result of the fact that Earth's gravity, as you move further away, gets weaker. So effectively, if you start with enough energy, you can slip through gravity's fingers because although jumping over the first meter converts a lot of that kinetic energy into potential, jumping over the 700 million millionth meter barely slows you down at all. And so this is the fact that allows you to escape a gravitational field with a finite amount of kinetic energy, even though you will be generating more and more potential energy forever. It will just be a very small amount for a lot of it. So I guess the point being, start practicing your jumping and just remember which way is down. Yo, 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 long time no see. Um, yeah, this was a holiday episode. I filmed the things whilst I was off in France, being on my merry way, uh, enjoying the local weather, which actually for most of it was slightly worse than England. Thanks, France. But I still had a lovely time eating my weight in cheese. So as you may have noticed, I have been a little bit skint on the old time for making videos, and that's because at the moment we're trying to push two papers out the door. The first of which is in its final round of comments, which is super duper, and the second of which hopefully will be out by the end of the month. I can see the end. Also, the video making process was made somewhat more difficult by my choice to start an industrious career being a little bit pretend homeless. Um, though I did enjoy spending a night in my car and spending another night sleeping in my office and then because my car and my office were not available to me I spent a lovely night under the stars which was actually very pleasant until it started raining. Anyway, I will draw this to a close because I have been rambling again. Um, I just wanted to say however thank you because it seems as though the people that have been watching the stuff that I'm doing and messaging me about it and leaving comments and stuff like that seemed to be a pretty cool bunch. So thanks. You guys are awesome. Bye five.